Look for a word, a word that's designated just for you this morning. It might come from the, it might come from the praise team. It might come directly from pastor. It might come from your neighbor. You never know. But open up your mind, open up your hearts, open up your spirit to be ready to be fed this morning. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for bringing us to this place, Father. We thank you, Father God, that we are not here by mistake, but we are here by design, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we call upon your presence, Father God. We call upon your presence in this building, Father. Father God, allow your angel to just take flight, Father God, and just to start bringing in, Father God, all the things we need for this morning, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you the glory. We give you the praise, Father God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you this morning, Father God, that you woke us up, Father God. You allow us to see another day, Father God. There are people, Father God, who are who are not allowed who are not allowed to see another day, Father God. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for for us, Father God. We know that we still have a mission, Father God. We still have have something that you have us on this earth to do, Father God. Father God, we are here to, Father God, bring people closer to you, Father. So we ask that, Father God, allow us to be a light today, Father. Allow us to be Allow us to be a vessel, Father God, today, Father God. Fill us up, Father God. Father God, we call upon the spirit of overflow, Father God. Not just for our finances, Father God, but for our spiritual awakening, Father God. Our, our spiritual beings, Father God. And in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you cover us, Father. Keep us from any, any hurt or harm or danger, Father God. And in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, instill in this church, Father God, everything we need, Father God, to, to overcome whatever Satan is trying to throw at us, Father. Father God, this morning, Father God, there are, there are people in here who, who have a heavy heart, have a heavy mind, Father God. There are things on their mind that, that they, they've been thinking about all week, Father God. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, we call upon that thing right now to go. We call upon victory, Father God. We speak that right now in the name of Jesus, we are overcomers, Father. We are overcomers of the world, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, by, by your stripes, Father God, we are healed, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. You have given us the ability to be victorious, Father God. We're not just at a church called Victory simply because, Father God, it sounds good, but because that's what we live, Father God. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we, we take steps into victory, Father God, right now, Father God. And we call upon, Father God, your will, Father God, to be done in our lives, Father God. Give us understanding, Father God. Give us peace, Father God. Give us guidance, Father God. Give us wisdom, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Father God, we speak, Father God, that in the name of Jesus, we have healing hands, Father. That, Father God, that we can touch, Father God, those who, who, are, in need of a, who are in need of a miracle, Father God. And we can be done through us, Father God, by you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, we call upon your love, Father God. Call upon the love of Jesus, Father God. He, he died on the cross for our sins, Father God. He laid down his life, Father God. It was his calling to do so, Father God. And you have called us to love on this earth, Father God, your true, your true commandment, Father God, for us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, Father God. So love the person that's next to you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we declare, Father God, that each and every person that's in this building right now, that if they came in feeling unloved, Father God, when they leave here, they will feel, be filled with love. In the name of Jesus, Father God, a hug, a handshake, a high five, Father God, will feel all the need that they need right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Father God, we call upon this place to be a place, Father God, to be to call in, to call in everything that we need, Father God, to, to help the, the city of Memphis, Father God, to help the area of Raleigh, Father God. We call upon that right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, that your will be done, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we just thank you for all that you've done. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father God, because without you, Father God, it's impossible, Father God. We can't do this without you, Father God. We walk with you, Father God. We talk to you on the daily, Father God. And we just thank you, Father God, for allowing us this peace, allowing your presence to, to, to usher in, Father God, the worship, Father God, that we're going to have today, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We give you the glory, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift up a sound. Let's lift up a sound into the heavens this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. We enter into your gates, Lord God. Hallelujah, with thanksgiving into your courts with praise this morning, God. Giving you all that you deserve this morning, God. 
in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We press past, God, our emotions today, God. We press past, God, every situation this morning, God, to give you glory today, Lord God, because you are worthy, Father. You are worthy, God. It wasn't our alarm clock, God. It wasn't the time from our cell phones this morning, but it was your spirit, God, the spirit of life, Lord God, that shook us out of sleep this morning, Father, and we bless you for it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, hallelujah, God, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, Lord. If we don't know what to ask for, God, you're worthy to be praised this morning, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, Lord. We bless you this morning, God, for the strength in our bones this morning, God. We bless and we thank you, Lord God, because there's someone, Lord God, who wish they could lift their hands, Lord God. There's someone, God, who wish they could clap their hands today, God. So we do it today, God, knowing, God, that if it wasn't for you, Lord God, it wouldn't be happening, God. We bless and thank you this morning for every good and perfect gift, Lord, that comes from you this morning, God. We thank you this morning, God, that we are more than conquerors, Lord God. We bless you and we thank you, Lord God, that we are the head and not the tail, God. Remind us this morning, Lord God, where we sit, God, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We bless and we thank you, Lord. We ask you to speak to our pastors this morning, Lord God. Download a rainbow word today, God, that would speak to our situations today, God. Talk to our praise team today, Lord God. God, that they will be oracles unto you today, God, that our praise, God, that our worship, Lord, will be worthy to crack this building today, God, and make it to the heavens today, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We invite you in today, God. We invite you in today, God. We invite you in today, God. Let your train fill the temple this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, press in, hallelujah, press in, hallelujah, hallelujah. press in, hallelujah. hallelujah. We give you glory today, God. Hallelujah. We lift up a sound today, God. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And the redeemed have a sound this morning. The redeemed, they have a sound this morning. It's not a sound of defeat. It's not a sound of lack. It's not a sound of weakness. It's a sound of triumph, a sound of strength. Hallelujah to your name, God. Hallelujah to your name, God. Hallelujah. 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 Our hallelujahs may not mean the same. My hallelujah screams victory. My hallelujah screams triumph. My hallelujah says I'm an overcomer. Hallelujah. My hallelujah says that the devil is a liar. My hallelujah says that the doctor doesn't have the final say. My hallelujah says that my kids will have an inheritance. My hallelujah says I live in victory. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your name today, God. We honor you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name, God. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy above the circumstance, God. And we bless you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And somebody say hallelujah this morning. Oh, wait a minute. I need it. I know what's up. I need to pop some firecrackers out there. Can somebody give God praise this morning? Hey! How many know that although salvation was a gift and it is free, it costs someone something? And in this case, it costs Yeshua, who is Jesus the Christ, his life. So when we come into a place where we, it's designed for us to worship together, don't you think we owe him just that much? To worship his name is not about me, it's not about them, and guess what? It's not even about you. It's about him this morning. So let's lift, let's, while we worship and praising the Lord, let's think that this is all about the son of the living God. Give God a victory shout in this place this morning.
up, Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Free to dance, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and clap our hands like this. How many know that the Lord is our light and he's our salvation? The Lord is my light. 
and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Say the Lord is, the Lord is my life and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain. I will remain. Yeah. So 
Lord. All right, y'all, break it down. Break it down for a minute. Somebody need somebody needs encouragement this morning. Somebody needs to be lifted up this morning. And somebody just need to worship the Lord this morning. To get the heaviness off of them. So I told Ava I was gonna have just a little bit of a song because I'm feeling this thing. Hey. Look here. The Lord is my life, salvation. Whom shall I fear? Come on. Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Hey, hey, hey. I will trust in you. Stay right there. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I will worship you. I will worship you. I will worship you. I will remain. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. One more time. I will remain. I will see the darkness of the Lord. I will remain. I will remain. Confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, come on. Hold up, y'all. Hallelujah. You have won the victory.
surrender
God, we thank you for being in your presence on this morning, God. Hallelujah. In the land of the living, amen. Hallelujah. I'm just this overflowed to be back in the house of God. Hallelujah. Back home at LLVC, amen. Hallelujah. Now we're going to have our confession of faith. If everyone please standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know when we decree and declare a thing, it shall be established on earth, in earth, amen. So we're going to say our confession of faith corporately this morning, amen. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Amen. I'm glad that we brought this back out. We used to say it a long time ago. Amen. 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 Do we have uh, PowerPoint on the screen? They're going to repeat after me. Amen. Everybody ready? Everybody ready to decree and declare this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. So people are coming from the north, south, east, and west. People are coming from the north, south, east, and west. Of Memphis. Of Memphis. Arlington, Bartlett, Milton, Cordova. Arlington, Bartlett, Milton, Cordova. And the surrounding areas. And surrounding areas. To hear the uncompromising word of God. To hear the uncompromising word of God. Every seat is filled in every service. Every seat is filled in every service. With someone who has great expectation. With someone who has great expectation. To experience God where no eyes have seen. To experience God where no eyes have seen. No ears have heard. No ears have heard. The miracle signs and wonders. The miracle signs and wonders. That our God is pouring out in this ministry. Every covenant partner. Man, woman, boy, and girl, and every child in this ministry is healed, healthy, blessed, successful, smart, creative, and very prosperous in our finances, family relationships, in our marriages. We are reaching the world by by being living examples of the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Through our consistency in worship, intercession and support. This year, this year, this year, and every year, we are prosperous. The door of success has been opened. We are succeeding. In everything in, Christ. in everything in Christ. The doors of failure, doors of failure have been closed. Have been closed. Let's do it again. The doors of failure, the doors of failure have, been have been closed. All right. Let's do it yeah. one more time. Yeah. The doors of failure, doors of failure have, been closed. have been closed. And we know no defeat. We, 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 we LLVC. Yeah. Have hope, have hope, holy operating power to endure. Holy operating power to endure. And we're going to say that one more time. Yeah. We, we, LLVC, LLVC have, hope, have hope, holy operating power to endure. Holy, holy power to endure. Amen. Yeah. We, we and, LLVC and LLVC can do all things through Christ. Can do all things through Christ. Which strengthen us. Hallelujah. Thank God for that word and that powerful declaration. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, if you can remain standing, we're gonna pray, we're gonna pray for um, Jerusalem and the United States. And Jerusalem. Um, yeah, Israel. Oh, we're gonna put them together. We're gonna just do it like this, Pastor. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, so Father God, we lift up these two countries, God. We lift up the country of Israel, God. We thank you, God, because you have commanded us, God, to pray for Israel, God, and the people, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you give them peace. Hallelujah. That surpasses all understanding in their country, God. We lift up the authority and the government of that country, Father God. We thank you that you said that we pray for those that are are, are over authority over us, God, that, God, we can live, hallelujah, a prosper and a blessed life, Father God. We lift up Jerusalem, God, because you put USA in the middle of Jerusalem, God. God, we thank you that we are people of intercession, God, to lift these countries up, God. We lift up USA, God. We thank you that this is a blessed and prosperous country, God. We lift up um, President Trump, God, and hallelujah, God. We thank you that he will be a man of wisdom, God, and that he will listen to godly counsel, God, to lift this country up, God. We thank you, God, for all the state and federal governments and mayors, God. God, we ask that they have wisdom from you, God, that they have an ear to hear what you're saying and the direction that we're going in this, uh, in this season, God. We thank you, God, for everybody that's called 
to their assignment, God, their place, their proper placement, God, their position, Father God. We lift them up, God. And God, we ask that you cover these both of these countries with the blood of Jesus, God. We ask that you shield and protect them, Father God. God, as they're blessed people, we are blessed people, Father God. And so, God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the name of an almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of an almighty God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. I guess I'm just saying it because it's just a cliche, but it's not just words that I'm saying. That we are sitting in the midst of an almighty God. Hallelujah. Glory. How many of you were in class today with Pastor Henry this morning? Yeah. That Sunday school class? I don't hear the man. Hey. I know Pastor said he just renamed his uh, men's ministry to Fishers of Men. That he's been intentional, that he is going after men, that he's believing God. So just to let the ladies know we're in a little competition, men and pastors. We're in a little competition. So we're going to see how many can get the 200. I'm getting my 200. I don't claim my 200. We're going to sit right here. See, he was supposed to step and say, well, my soldier did. He just forget. He didn't do it. You got it. You, you got it. Okay. Yeah, so uh, so in the Grace Mentoring class this morning, were we blessed by God today? Yeah. Hallelujah. My God. If you all received that text from me last night, you didn't get a chance to make it this morning, you'll get a chance to get it next week. When I tell you that the enemy, uh, Gavin, can you put up for me 1 Peter uh, 5 and 8? And we're going to read from 5, uh, 8 through, I think, the 10th verse, I believe, or 11th verse. Hallelujah. I want you to know um, through the 11th verse, uh, 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11. I want you to know that you have been positioned for purpose. You've been positioned for purpose. I don't want to say you've been positioned for favor because you live in favor. If you woke, if you woke right now, sitting in the seat, you already received the favor of God. Amen. My job today is to do the announcements. I thought Brittany was going to help me. I don't see her. I guess she may be with the baby or something. But let me say this to you. The enemy, your adversary, the devil, is seeking to put your name to a plan that says failure. And so I just want to share with you a little bit today. So I'll get up a little bit before pastor gets up and ministers and I'll do the announcements and I'll, I'll give you all that. So let me, let me give you the announcements first and we'll get there in a minute. Uh, Shamise, do we have? Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, today's announcements are success school is 9 o'clock a.m. All the men, you guys are in, in a blessed place. So Tata Sam. We'll get, we'll get JJ, I'll get JJ, I'll get JJ. Meet y'all in pastor's office every morning at 9 o'clock. And from what I'm hearing, I'm hearing good things about your class. And I'm hearing this really good. Uh, Grace Mentoring, ladies, you will be in here with me at 9 o'clock here in the sanctuary. On Tuesdays, please listen up for your victory announcements by way of calling posts. Because um, sometimes uh, Lisa Gibson can't make it or me and Pastor may reschedule. So you have to listen for those Tuesday services by way of calling post. That number that comes up on your phone, it's a 405 number. It's an Oklahoma number. So if you see that number, it's, I know it's not a bill collector, but you know, you may think of telemarketing. They wear my phone out, a telemarketing. So uh, it's, it's not a telemarketer. It's your church trying to give you an update to announcements and letting you know uh, what's going on in ministry, okay? On July 15th, we're going to have a yard sale. That's why Brittany should be in here. Um, a yard sale. And what we want to do, uh, everything that we're doing right now, we're trying to, uh, can you come help me? Yard sale. Um, we are trying to raise money to pay off this building. And, and I think in August, Pastor setting us all up. We are going to do a vision month. Uh, we normally let you guys know, we used to let you all know what we spend with the monies in the church, your donations and what you give to us. 
We want you to see what's going on. And we haven't done it. I know in about, I know since we've been in this building, we haven't done it. I think because we've just been busy doing, uh, doing church and doing things and building. So I think in the month of August, the first Sunday of August, Pastor will have Vision Month. That whole month will be Vision Month. And we're choosing to do, do that because kids are on the way back to school, you know, you are coming back from vacation and all those types of things. And what we want to do is put the, the house and the church back on track. <laughs> You know, this is the house we had summer fun. You know, kids go to school, being out of school the whole summer, and go to school to be wild. The teachers be like, sit down, baby. Sit down, baby. <laughs> but, you know, they've been doing summer, uh, doing their thing for the summertime. So I'm going to let Brittany talk to you a little bit about the um, church yard sale, and then I'll come back after that. Good morning, to saints. How are you lovely people? So, uh, like she said, we're going to have a yard sale. And um, these are the rules. So you're going to, um, anybody that wants to contribute. So what you can do is any fairly used items, items that you've worn, make sure that they're not like something you wouldn't buy if you saw it in the store. So if it's worn and it's worn out, don't bring it here. Uh, I'm going to say, I love you, but take it back home because you don't want to give somebody something that you wouldn't buy if you saw it in the store or the yard store or the thrift store or whatever. So um, you can bring any items, in, if it's clothes, shoes, baby stuff, or whatever it is, if it's fairly used, um, please bring it to the yard sale. I'm going to say that the day before, are we going to have it up here to set up the day before or that morning? Okay, so we're going to do it across the street on the 14th. We're going to pre-set up so we can have it there um, already set so, so that Saturday we'll come in to, you know, get ready and get everything priced out. But so any items that you all want to sell, so we're going to do whatever you sell, you'll, keep ten, you'll uh, give 10% to the church. And then we're going to also sell food, and all that will go to the church. Now, you awesome people, if y'all want to give more, bless your soul. <laughs> Don't be so stingy. <laughs> um, but, yes, you can, whatever you sell, um, you give 10% to the church, and then the rest keeps in your, your pocket, which is great. If you want to give more, that's awesome. Like I said, the food, we're, we're going to have, like, hot dogs and drinks and a, um, a chip, like a combo, and we'll sell that. And that will also give money to the church as well. We want to bless our house, right? Um, also, to um, so let me know, see me after service, and let me know what you have. Count how many items you have. If you only want to give five, that's fine. But you know, make sure it's some substance. It's just things that you know just raggling your house. You want to get out the house. If it's trash, take it to the trash dumpster. We don't want it. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that's it. So please let me know who all wants to sell. Raise your hand if you want to put some things into the items. I got one, two. Ooh, yes, oh, great yard sale. Yay! One, two, three, four. Furniture, whatever it is, furniture, shoes, clothes, apparel, accessories, um, books, whatever. Whatever you want to sell, anything, as long as it's, it's neatly and it's not so, you know, messed up. Okay? <laughs> also, um, oh, clean items. Make sure if, you, if you're selling clothes, take them to the dry cleaners and then sell them. So don't bring them and wash them in your house. Take them to the dry cleaners. Or wash them. You know, well, I don't know. You want to spend, wash clothes. spend to sell. <laughs> yeah. Okay, live youth. Uh, Live youth event will be on July 28th. I think that they're calling that um, Let's Make a Deal. I am excited about it. I'm really excited, excited, excited about that. But um, uh, the youth event is going to have that for the children. Amen. Um, also, we thank God that we want to pay our building off. Uh, if we're going to affect the community like we want to affect the community, we got to pay this building off. This building... Uh, they gave us five years to pay it off, so that five year will hit March of next year. So we ain't waiting to March of next year to get it paid off. We're gonna go and get it paid off, and I think we're around like eighty five thousand somewhere in there. Uh, but we'll have all the numbers for you guys. Uh, I know them next month because Pastor wants you guys to see what we're doing. You will be surprised to know what appears to look like a small church. You will be totally surprised to know what we've taken through the year and what we have to do. If you notice this year, we did a, we're doing a lot of repasses. So I guess God's giving us another assignment. So every time you look up, there's another repass. I think we've done a repass probably the whole month of June. Maybe the whole month of June we've had uh, repasses. And uh, God has been blessed, and we thank God for your help. Those of you that come and help and volunteer your time on Saturday, thank you so much because you could be doing anything else. But being up here serving, and then we're here uh, <laughs> to probably what, 4 o'clock, you know, being here on Saturday. So I want to thank you all for that. So 
uh, saying that, we want to make sure that each covenant partner that you pay your uh, your pledge, that pledge is five hundred. It's easy for two hundred people to pay five hundred dollars. That's a hundred thousand dollars. It's paid off uh, if we all did that. And we're talking about doing it in three months. Uh, we're sending letters out on tomorrow that we're asking. Yes, ma'am. They they're done, Ellen. Praise the Lord. So we'll be sending out about 350 letters tomorrow asking people to help us get our building paid off. There are a lot of pe people, churches that Pastor Henry and I, and our church has helped paid off. And it's just our due season Amen. that it's time for us to receive the same favor that we've shown to other people. And if you can't pay the $500 at one time, you can do it in three months, 167 for three months. That, and so we should have did it, uh, uh, what was that, April, May, and June. So now we're in July. August and September. So we want to make sure that we uh, take care of that. So if you want to go online and pay it, you can do it. Make, and that's another thing. When we do this on the each fourth Sunday, uh, I kind of noticed that sometimes instead of people paying their tithe or offering, they take that and pay their pledge. Your pledge is above your uh, your tithe. It's, it's, it supersedes the tithe. <laughs> Okay, thank you for movie night. Movie night was yeah. a success. Oh, my God, it was so awesome in here. We watched the movie Shaq. Uh, it was phenomenal. I saw it again for the fourth time on, on, on Friday night. Thank you for the concessions. I was supposed to give you all a number today of what we raised. for. The, that was for the building fund today after service. If you didn't get a chance to sew in on Friday night, we still have those angle sliders today after service for $2 and other, other stuff in the dollar piece. So I want to say thank you so much for doing that. Do you have a birthday this month? Anybody with a birthday in July? Stand up, stand up, stand up. Top it. Ooh, there's a lot of them. Oh, wow. Where is Trace? Now, Trace's birthday was last month. So we want to say happy birthday to you. We speak the favor, uncommon favor of God upon your life that people will look at you, bless you, and give unto your bosom. And I need you to give Miss Tracy Jones your birthday before you leave. So make sure that we salute you. We're going to go back to saluting our covenant partners uh, each month like we used to a long time ago. We used to always have a cake and ice cream at the end of the month to, to just say thank you and love on you at the end of the month. We're going back to do some things we used to do that we just stopped doing. So at the end of the, each month, we're going to do cake and ice cream. And those of you, uh, anniversaries, any anniversaries? No anniversaries in July? Okay. So I know there was Kelvin Jones, Rashana, Shamish, um, Laquita, our new member, Stefan, Miss Ann, your birthday this month too? What day? 13th. You coming up. And you're Jamar? 14th. You next Sunday. Let, oh. And July the 4th? Get a, get, you we got a star spring on Bella, baby. Praise the Lord. Uh, at this time, I want to just give homage to one of our members. And I want you guys to know that we love in each and every last one of you. There is not one of you that we don't love equal to the other one. And we want you to know that we love you. We thank you for your support. And we are concerned with you. We're concerned with what you're going through throughout the week. Uh, I am going to, uh, Miss Diana, give, uh, I'm going to get a phone, the phone that I have. I'm going to get me another phone, and I'm going to give my phone to the church so that my phone won't blow up so much. I was out of town, Pastor and I. Yeah. I was out of town this past weekend, Daddy, and I mean that phone blew up. And I knew I got up here last other week and said, we're out of town. We're going to be gone for four days. That phone blew up. And I got Texas out the water. I was like, Jesus. Uh, there was one point we couldn't even get in the session. We sat and I said, just turn it off. Just turn it off. He said, yeah, just turn it off. And then we turned it off. We felt like, what if something really bad happens? And then something did bad happen. So we had to uh, do that. So we're going to get up. I'm going to give my phone. I'm going to give me another phone this week. I'm going to turn my phone into the church, and we're going to use that number, that phone. If there is something going on with you, and I'll designate, we haven't found out yet who we're going to give that phone number, that phone to. It will be somebody. Elder or Miss Jones, somebody going to have a phone. And so if something's going on, you're going to the hospital. Like right now, Keita Bird's in the hospital. I did not know she was in the hospital. Oh, she's home. See, see, see. I heard she was in the hospital. 
I didn't, I didn't know that she was there. Of course, I would have made my, my presence known, but I didn't know. So when I leave here today, I will be going by me and passion see Keita as one of our sweethearts. She's been here with us a long time. And that is where Ella Charlotte is. Amen. Uh, Pastor Roland and them, they're out of town on vacation. You guys pray for them uh, and, and their safe travel. I believe that is it for the announcements. I want you to know I love you, but I want to share this with you. Thanks, Peter. I want to share this with you in 1 Peter 5 and 8. I thank God. You know, I know you all may think I'm partial to my, my, my father-in-law, but I do. I love my father-in-law. I love my father-in-law. I, I don't have a dad, and I love my father-in-law. I do. So I want you to know I love your dad. He uh, lost his mom. His mom went home to be with Jesus a couple of weeks ago, and 93 years old, and you know, they were worried about that. We were worried about that. I said, that man's stronger than a horse. I said, y'all may go see Jesus before he see him. Because my, my dad is a strong man. I just thank you for being the man that you are. And I thank you for being the father that you are to my husband, to your son. I thank you so much for that. I just want to let you know that your living and you raising your children has not been in vain. And all that you do and have tried to do, the ones that you've tried to give advice to, if they didn't take it, they will later in life. They will accept it later in life. Because life will make you receive what you don't want to understand late, you know, early in life. So I just want to thank you for that, Dad. I give you praise. Give God praise for your life. And I thank him that your body is healed, you're healthy, and that you'll see even better days in your latter years. Amen? And I, you know, I know I love my mother-in-law. She's sitting with that flower. I know I love her. That's my sweetie pie. First Peter 5 and 8. Is it on screen? Okay. I want us to read that together, please. Ready? Read. In unison. Ready? Read. Did you hear that? The same thing that you're going through, that you think you're the only somebody going through it, someone else in the world is going through that same thing. Keep going, 10. But the God of all grace. Amen. Now, it did say the, the, your enemy. Who's your enemy? Who's your adversary? Is it your brother or sister? Is it your coworker? Come on, talk to me. Is it your family member? So when we get upset and go through things in life, the first thing we say is that girl just got the devil in her. He got the devil in him. No, 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 no. You're dealing with a spirit. And it's an ancient spirit. That spirit knows every weakness that we have because he's the one that eggs it on all the time. And so when, you, when we're going through things in life and, and, and um, you feel as if you're by yourself, you're not by yourself. Everything you go through, it is positioning you for purpose. And the process of how you go through a thing determines how the results are and the end of that thing. Let me tell you something. We are all going through a test. But all tests not are of God. The test sometimes is because we were walking out of order and out the will of God. Today we t discussed in, in uh, the women's class, one of the things that it was said was this, and I'm going to take my seat, amen. One of them said, the wisdom tip says, an uncommon future will require uncommon preparation. So you need to know that if you have fa a favor on your life to have an uncommon future. The next one says, those without your pain never understand your goals. So what we do all the time is try to make people understand who we are. If they don't understand your pain, if they've never understood what divorce feels like, if they never know what it's felt like to not have a job, if they've never had anyone to pass away in the family, how would they understand how you feel about that? So we share a lot with people that they can't even help us. So we go to people, we talk to them about what we're going through instead of going to our creator, the one that created us. I'm going to share one more. 
It said, those who disrespect your assignment are disqualified for access. Disqualified for access. Let me read it one more time because y'all quiet. Those who disrespect your assignment, they disrespect who you are, who God called you to be. They shouldn't have access to the favor of God on your life. I'm telling y'all something today, that we're living and we're sitting in an uncommon building. Who gets a building 10,000 square feet for $112,000? Who paid for a building like this less than $1,000? I would know for this building is now $121.18. Can I tell you something? That's, that's less than a house note almost. But that's an uncommon what? Favor. Are you walking with people with uncommon favor in their life? Or are we walking with people that dismantle us and don't respect us? Today, I want you to hear the word of God as pastor brings the word. I want you to know that the word is coming to position you for purpose. It's coming to position you for favor. It's coming to help you walk in the fullness of God. It's coming to show you things about yourself. Now, you're not going to like what you feel, but the result of it will be good, Vichy. Hallelujah. Jesus it didn't feel good being nailed to the cross or being pierced in the side, but he was positioning us for favor. God bless you. Let's give it up for our pastor. pray. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all that you deserve today, God. We want to stop right here. You are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. God, we praise you right now for just because you who you are and what you are. We thank you now for the power of the word being released today. We thank you, Lord God, for, for being good stewards over our finances. God, we thank you. For every human being in this room, we don't take lightly of no souls, God. All souls belong to you. Yeah. I thank you now for the men and women and children and all those who are coming in the future. We give you praise, God, for the supernatural release yeah. that's about to overtake us Hallelujah. today. We thank you now, God, because you're releasing something in the atmosphere that this world has never seen. And it looks good and it smells good. Yeah. I thank you right now, God, that the saints are about to receive their harvest season due in the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. I said you are about to receive Hallelujah. your harvest due yeah. in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Give y'all said, give God some praise right there. Hallelujah. Give him some praise. Don't be scared. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Give him some praise. Don't stop praising him. Don't stop praising him. Don't stop praising him. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Every man in this room, every woman in this room should give him some praise. Hallelujah. You thought you got hit by yourself. God has brought you all the way from your house to destination. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I feel God already. You may be seated. Come on, man of God. You know what to do back there. Glory to God.
And when you get better, your life will get better. You must work on yourself more than you work on anything else. You must add more value to others than anyone else does. Take a step back and look at your life closely. What can you improve? Be honest with yourself. In every area of your life, what can you improve? If you're being honest, there will be many areas you can improve. If not, you're either not human or you're lying to yourself. Commit to work on improving those areas. Remove everything unimportant in your life that can get you sidetracked from your goals and purpose. Anything that takes you further away from the life you want, eliminate it. It might be TV. It might be people in your life. It might be unhealthy habits. You know what it is. Look within. Be honest with yourself. This is your life. Hey. We are talking about nothing is more important. Be honest with yourself. Be strong. Have the courage to live the life you want to live, regardless of what anyone else thinks. Nothing will change unless you change. Nothing will get better unless you get better. It's all about you. The road to success is hard, but it isn't impossible yeah. unless you quit. Yeah. Stick it out. Suffer through. Show your character. And one day, they might speak of you. You, the winner. You, the champion. The one who didn't quit. The one who fought back. Fought with heart. With courage. If you like both, you'll take the easy path. You won't take action. You won't decide right now to make a change. You won't take action right now on changing your life. But you're not like the race. You wouldn't be listening to this if you were. Decide right now. This is it. I will take action right now. The second this ends, I'm going to set up my life to win. All things that take me further away from the life I want, out. Positive daily habits, locked in. Working on myself daily, locked in. Reading more, learning more, committing to be better every day, lock it in. I will receive better because I will be better. I will get change because I will change. Come on, give God a hand, praise. Hallelujah. Put the light. Did y'all see that video? Did that motivate you for a few minutes? Did you start it up and stir it on the inside? I want this for a second, just say it out loud. I will, I will change. change. Because I want to change. And I want you to remember saying that because I didn't just show you this video just to just to be showing it. When I locked in on that video, I couldn't be still in my bed. I said, oh, my God, I got to show this. I said, I got to win, Travis. I got to win. I had an awesome time at the end of men's class today. And, and my son brought up a good subject. My, my dad brought up a good subject. And it was a, 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 a life changing in the, in the men's room. I, I mean, in the men's, uh, in my office. Because... I decided to do something different, something I never done before, and I brought the men in my circle, in my private area, and, and let them feel. Because you know what? It's a it, that office is anointed, and you could have heard Minister Brewster begin to teach. I, he said, "Now, this is what I like about change." Minister Brewster told me he said, "I'm going to tell you something. Y'all don't know this, but I've never done this before in my life." He said, I never taught nothing like this before. This is my first time teaching. I could have went through the roof. You telling me that this man of God is teaching like this the first time because he won't change. Yeah. And as he, Now, he did some studying. You know he studied because he had notes and things. And, you know, my son came in. He had questions and stuff. He, th he threw something out there. And we began to elaborate in the dialogue about all the things that me and deal with, and, this, and we, we didn't get too far from the text. But what I did like about it, we all want something greater. Yes. We deal with things in life, and, and we, we want better, but we fight through this flesh. 
to pray through things. Oh, y'all listen to me today. What, you, what did you see on this, on this video that, that kind of stirred you up? One thing that stirred me up was I want to improve. Who don't want to improve? Who wants to be the same way every day of the year? Then here you come. So in my notes, if I had a message today, I said, if I had a message, so y'all see what I'm doing? I'm trying to be technology cool with you. <laughs> Savvy. I'm trying to be different. I used to use this in a while. But if I had a message today, it would be this. Write this down. Your words become your reality. The only way something's going to change, it has to start with you. If you want something to change in your life, it starts with you and what you say. God, I bless you, my dad. And, I'm, and I'm, this, I'm, I'm not going to be too long, but I'm going to try my best to get a few things because time is far spent. And uh, I want to share with you what the Lord has given me. You might want to take this down or put it on, put your phone on, on voice uh, recording because I'm going to be moving. I want to change so bad. And I wonder... What can I do to make things change, my son, my daughter? You got to do this. Listen to this. You are where you are today because of your words. You are where you are today because what you say. About yourself. Watch this, young people. I like the word, I mean, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be more cooler, and I'm going to use the word peak. Peak this out. Whatever you say about yourself, your words are seed. Watch this. When you speak something out, you give life to what you say. You're spreading seeds what you say. You want to be better? You want to improve? You want to change? What are you saying? You're giving life to what you say. You're also giving death to what you say. I'm going to be deep in a few minutes. The pastor's going to get deep. Watch this now. Pick this out. I got to remember that. If you continue to say, say, if, if you continue to say things, eventually it becomes reality. If you continue to say certain things, or whatever, fake words or negative words, Eventually, it becomes reality. Whether you believe it or not, ha, watch this young man and woman of God. Wherever you believe it or not, you are prophesying your future. Can I talk to you for a second? If you have your Bible, if you have your laptop, your iPad, whatever you got, go to me, Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18, New King James Version. You're prophesying what you say the moment you open your mouth. Y'all listen to me? Oh, glory to God. Proverbs chapter 18. If you got to say amen. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth or lips. And with the increase of his lips shall be filled. I'm going to read this again because some of y'all didn't catch that. A man's belly, whoo, I like that. A man's belly or woman's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Do you hear the word satisfied? Do you see that? Satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the lips, the increase, that's what it's saying positively. Increase his lips shall be filled. What well, you want to be filled, you want to be satisfied, what are you saying? Come out your mouth. If you want to be filled, you want to be satisfied, what are you saying? I want change. How you want change? And but what are you saying about your change? Verse 21 says, death and life are in the power of the head. What you say now? It's going on in my head, y'all. It's a war going on up here. But 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 what are you saying? 
the power coming from your tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Oh, my, my, my. Pastor, I think you're about to go there. What are you saying out of your mouth? Y'all listen to young people. Y'all listen to me. I want to hear them respond. Y'all listen to me. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And this is what it's saying. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. And I like the last one. I got to, I got to speak to the last one. It might be on your notes, but on my notes. Verse 22 says, whosoever finding a wife, finding a good thing, and hear the, hear the coup de grace, and obtain favor. Glory to God. to bring it out, baby. I had to bring it out. Who yeah. shall ever find a wife? Now, if you really want to get deep, I don't have too time to get that deep, but it's really talking about a man looking for a woman, not a woman looking for a man. Yeah. So whatever man say, it moves the course of his house. Whatever man says in his house, it moves the course or it activates the, 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 the supernatural realm in heaven to be manifested on the earth in your house, man. Yeah. See what the Bible said, verse 20 said, amen. It didn't say a woman. That's what my Bible said. Watch this, y'all. I'm working fast. Life will move, write this down, in the directions of your words. Life will move in the directions of your word. It I wish I had a train. I wish I had a train. You, you know, on a train, you got, you got the other box carts that's going on. They're part of the train, but they're not the head. The, tra the train itself, the caboose, it's, it's going in the direction it needs to go, and they following behind it. It's just like your words are the train. Jesus is the, Jesus is the head of it, so we're following him. What you say, glory to God. Y'all got that? Now, watch this now. If life moves in the direction of your words, well, these are the things I wrote down. I hear people say, in my course of living, I hate Monday. Who in this room said it? I hate Monday. You're saying something, you're putting something in the atmosphere, so come next Monday, you're going to hate Monday. Oh, I just can't go to work on, I hate Friday. Oh, we got to go into we inventory audit. I don't want to do Monday, so we can do inventory Monday. Now, this is what I love, this, I heard, I like, this is what I like, that I hear people say, and, you, and you, you, you're destroying your future when you say these things. Everybody loves you more than me. Are y'all listening to me? Everybody loves you more. Now, these are some words that people use that's been, been spit out in the atmosphere because it came from you. Everybody like, everybody like you more than me. Glory to God. I would never get ahead. Who says that? Who says that? I would never get ahead. What did that thing, the video said? I won't change. But you saying, I would never get ahead. Or they say things like this. I'm not as smart as you. These are some of the things people say. I'm writing this down now. My money's too short. Come on, y'all. They're about something right there. My money's too short. You have many people in this room say, my money's too short. Money's too short. Because it's, it's, it's short, every time you turn to get paid, it's short. It's not enough. I'm working on something. Y'all just stay with me if you admit it. I'm working on something. Oh, this is good right here. You make me sick. You make me sick. Every time I see you. Who says that? Are all of us saints, born again, baptized on the Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays? Say, you just make me sick every time I see you. Okay, I'm working on something. I'm working on something. I'm too tired to go to church. Miss, you missed out this church Sunday service. Okay, watch this now. I'm going to go next week. But you spoke last week. Right. So this week is another week. Guess what? You at home. Next week. I'm going to try to move, but I may, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. The, it it started with one week, and then it started off with a, a whole month you missed service. Now, you done spoke this thing, 
Now, if we hadn't seen you in almost a year, because you said you too tired. Y'all don't have to pass here this morning. I don't know whether y'all listening to me or not. But you got to hear what I'm trying to tell you today. So that turns into, now watch this now. I hear people say these things. I will never be great. Or it's flu season. I'm a flu this year. Or this is what I hear. So many years, go break a leg. How many people say the word, go break a leg? Where does that come, where does that come from? I catch myself saying those little cliche words because it's not positive, and it, you're killing people. You're destroying physical things from the, from the spiritual mouth. Life will move in the direction of your words. Watch this now. I wrote this down. Because of all I'm saying to you, pastors, teachers, school teachers, fathers, mothers, and mentors, and coaches play a big role in children's future. Why, Pastor Henry? Because they're speaking things over their life. Mentors, coaches. How many coaches you know? Come on, you can do it, son. Come on, run that ball. Come on, come on, son. You can do it. And he probably the weakest thing on the team. But he's working with him every week and working with him every week and pumping him up saying, you can do this. Mentors, pastors, what we do every week, me and Pastor Lord, we giving you guys the things, your tools you need so you can accomplish your goal. Hallelujah. At some point in life, you will eat the fruit of what you say. At some in life, you will eat what you say. I hope you're writing this down. You cannot talk negative and expect a positive outcome. I want y'all to write that down. You cannot talk negative. Expect a positive outcome in life. Don't work it. Almost finished. You cannot. Oh, I love this right here. We almost finished, y'all. We almost finished. Ooh, I bless God today. You cannot speak or talk defeat and expect victorious outcome. I would never be able to afford that happen. And you that'll go on in your life and you'll pass by. You done made, you done made so much money that year and you, you could have bought two houses. You'd be surprised what you can afford. I can say this test there, I tell this testimony. There's some things I know I didn't qualify for. I said, I know it, but I never said I didn't qualify. I know what the system said. See, your words change the system. What you believe changed the system. Come on, come on. Oh, y'all can't hear this morning. Glory to God. I, I remember this reading this. People who walked around because their generation family had diseases, and my folk had this, and I, they had that, and they got bad knees, and they always, you know, they have these issues in their body. And, and, and notice, you change your mouth. Change your mouth from poor confessions to a positive abundance. Your confessions say that when we say what it is now, say I am the healed. Say I am the prosperous. I confess it out loud. I am who God say I am. I said it with a bad English. I said, I am who God say I am. I will live a long life. And I will be satisfied. You just said something. Repeat this one more thing for me. I will live in the overflow. What I touch, prosper. Say, I am the head. And I'm not the tail. I want you to take that and put that in your spirit. Lock that in. How many times have you heard me and Pastor Lord say that? I am the head. I am the head. I am the head. You look up, you be the problem. You've been promoted, and you don't know how you got promoted. First John five. Go with me. First John five. New King James Version. Three. 
these things I have written unto you, that believe on the same, on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that ye have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he heard us. Read again, Pastor Henry, because they didn't hear it. And this is the confidence. I have confidence that I have in him, not me or the, or the system. If we ask anything according to his will, God hears you. If you ask anything according to his will, he hears you. So some things he's not hearing and listening to. But if it's part of his will, what is his will, Pastor? Did you be healed? What is his will? Did you be prosperous? What is his will? Did you be the head and not the tail? Can y'all see what I'm going now? That's his will. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Verse 15. And if we know that he hears us, now if you know that he hears you, whatsoever. Come on, everybody say, whoever. Whatsoever. We ask. We know that we have the petition or the request that we desire of him. You just confess something. You just put something in the atmosphere. He heard you say his words. So you saying, whatever, whatever I ask to him, according to his will, he hears me. So wait a minute. There's a need. Uh, God knows the need, but I'm talking about desire. God knows what you need. I'm talking about desire. It's a big difference. He didn't say you have a petition that you need of him. It says desire. Y'all watch this now. I wrote this down, y'all. I am motivated to change, but this is going to get it twisted. Jesus gave us eternal promise. So in other words, he's saying in verse, in verse 3, you can say all those things about the natural. Unless you got a, a spiritual promise, you'll be waiting for a long time. You'll be fighting your flesh and you'll always have issues. You'll always, you'll always be dealing with things because you have not put Jesus in your equation. If you don't put him in your, if you don't put him in your confession, well, Pastor, you know, I ain't seen y'all since last week. And have, what, if, what have you said during the week from Monday to now? What are you saying positively? Are you saying negative stuff all week long? And here comes Sunday, we got to pump you up? God, but that's my job. And I love doing it because guess what? I miss it too. There's times in my life I don't hear no about no Jesus. I don't want to go to sleep. But then God reminds me. And you're not going to get ahead until you, I didn't get nothing without, I, I didn't get nothing without him involved in it. Okay, I'm working on one more scripture. Mark 11, verse 12. Mark 11, verse 12. Turn on that real quickly. We're working on something. We're about to go home. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. Verse 12, Mark 11. The next morning as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. And he noticed a fig tree full of leaf a little way off. So he went over to see it, see if he could find any figs. But there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for fruit. Then Jesus said to the tree, may no one ever eat your fruit again. And the disciples, what they do? They heard him say it. Come down to verse 20. This morning, by the fig tree, he had cursed. The disciples noticed that it was withered from the root up. How did he notice that? Peter remembered what Jesus had said to the tree and explained, look, Rabbi, the tree you cursed has withered and died. Watch this, verse 22. Then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up or thrown down into the sea, and it will happen. But if you must, but you must really believe it was, it must happen, and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that, 
you have received it. It may be yours. Okay, I read this. And I read this and I stopped somewhere in the long of the Jesus cursing the tree. And it hit me, it hit me late last night around 1 o'clock this morning. I mean, 1, what did I write down? 1, 26 in the morning. I read this about 10,000 times. I read it again another three more times. And I read the thing, and I went back to verse 12. Go back to verse 12. I want, well, we're about to end this thing. Don't leave. Watch this. Don't leave. You got to watch this. Don't, I want y'all to catch this. Verse 12. The next morning, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. What was he hungry? He noticed a fig tree full of leaves a little way off. So as he went over to see if he could find any figs, y'all watching this? But there were no, but there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for the fruit. And I stopped right there. All this time I never saw that. All these years I never saw that. The Bible says that Jesus was hungry. He saw a tree. Is all. As he got to the tree, he noticed it was just leaves and no fruit. If you read the Bible, it said it was a season for fruit. So why did he curse the tree? Y'all better watch this now. He talked to him in the spiritual realm. It don't matter what season you in, you can change it. It don't matter what season the thing is, you can change it. Okay, Pastor Henry. Okay, Pastor Henry. Okay. He says, have faith in God. I tell you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. You can say to this mountain, what is your mountain in this season you want you in? If you tell the mountain, be lifted up and thrown in the sea, the Bible says it will happen. But you must really believe it would happen. You got to believe it. That's my coup de gras. You got to believe it. I don't care what season something may be in your life. You still have faith. You still have faith, my friend. The Bible said there was no fruit on that tree, but it was a fig tree. Yes, it was a fig tree, but it wasn't time for the fruit to grow. So when Jesus there, he said, I'll tell you what, I curse you. He gives this tree a personality. He says, may no one ever eat your fruit. He give this tree a personality. And as I began to dwell with that, and I will then with deal with it with the tree, how he tell you talk about the season, he gives this tree a personality like no, you will never grow again. And so I began to think about how the people brought the woman to Jesus who had committed adultery. Watch this. He brought the woman, they brought the woman on the ground and say, Jesus, what you gonna do with this? I'm gonna paraphrase. You know, what you gonna do with so he looked at her, read the story. He began to write things on the ground. And he said to everybody who was out there, out there watching and listening, the person who has no sin, you throw the first stone. If you read the Bible, they all walked away, every last one of them. And so Jesus said, woman, where are your cues is at, baby? Jesus said, where are your cues is at, baby? Where are your cues is at? And she said, Jesus, there are none. He says this, neither do I. Go your way and sin no more. I said, Mom, wait a minute. Bro. Wait, hold up. You mess with my, my logic. You tell me that this man cursed a tree, but he didn't curse the one who committed sin. He had a tree. You telling me that Jesus, loving God who said he is, he cursed a tree because he was hungry, but he didn't curse the woman. He could have cursed the woman because she was in her sin. But what's the difference? He, he loved humankind. He loved you. He loved me. He loved all of you guys. Whatever. The Bible said he gave that woman mercy. That was mercy. Live in plain color. He could have he could have used the law and stoned her. He could have he could have used a full 
course of the law, the law says you're the strongest amount to commit. He said, but I choose you not to. Jesus had what he said. If he showed up and touched the tree, he could have kissed me too. So I'm looking at this now. We're going home. Out of the whole Bible, he never curses a person. Only thing Jesus cursed was that tree. He never cursed no man. He didn't curse no one in his course of his journey. But he did curse a tree. Stand on your feet. You have what you say. But I, the, 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 the moral of this story, as I said to you earlier, your words become your reality. Jesus changed her reality by giving her some hope. He gave her mercy. Even though she was not the best, the best person to be on the praise team. She wasn't the best person to be in this. She wouldn't know she was because she was in her mess. He said, I do not accuse you either. Go your way and sin no more. That tells me something right there. That's mercy. How many of us in this room right now? God, I can, I, I can use a little mercy right now. You don't know. Huh? I'm a big mess in this white suit, but huh, he found mercy in my life. He didn't speak negative over me. He spoke positive over me. And that's what he saw in the woman. God speaks life over you. Every eye closed. Every head bowed. Father, thank you. This short message I gave you today to your people. I pray now, Lord God, that they heard what I said about the tree. I heard, heard what I said about their reality. I heard they heard God and watched the video about changing. And Father, I thank you now that what I said today, God, would be engrafted and be and bought inside of their heart for a long time. And they will find them place, God, where they can make that, 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 that you turn back to you. And whoever it may be, Father God, you know who they are. I thank you for supernatural improvement by getting the word inside of them. I thank you that your Holy Spirit condemns no man and no woman, but you bring them to a love. You bring them to the body of Christ with grace. And you're in this room right now, and the Lord has dealt with you about any area of your life, and you know you're not in the best place. Don't come down here. I want you to raise your hand. I always want to raise your hand. And you say, Father, I'm not in the best place, but I, I just need I just need to continue to change my course by keeping with the word of God. I said, I didn't do well yes last week. I didn't do well, Lord God, last night, but here I am. I need to. I'm talking to Hallelujah. I need help, Lord God. And today, Lord God, if every person's hand is raised, every person's heart is in this room, God, I thank you that you will impart into them the light of your word on right course. Keep them on course, Father God. Keep them on course of this journey. And on purpose to enlighten them up, God, to, to win. They are winter winning souls. And I give you praise for it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call and I speak life over your people. I speak God prosperity and other means, Father God. Open doors have been shut. Men and women of God, to see them in pouring their bosom. Let supernatural favor overtake them today. I prophesy overtaking glory to God's favor on the people of God in this room in Jesus' name. Give God a praise right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Did y'all receive that? Did y'all receive it? Was it too deep for you? Not yet. I want to go deeper. Next Sunday, we're going, we going, we going to get the shovel. I'm going to bring the shovel and a, a construction. I think I'm praying. I'm going to bring me a shovel. I tell Jamel, bring me my shovel to church and bring your construction hat because we're going to work. At this time, it's getting late. I want you all to get a seed in your hand. While they're getting a seed, I'll go ahead and, and, and um Brother Andrews, pass out of communion. Go ahead and prepare your seed. I need an envelope.
Hallelujah. Can I get some music back there up, up here? Is that good, y'all? Y'all still love me? Well, come back next Sunday now if you say you love me. <laughs> <laughs>